Hello and welcome to this video where the subject is strategic creative colour. My name's Barry Beckham. I've used this technique since way back into my darkroom days when I was adding strategic colour to black and white prints. But in more modern times, and the popular title for this technique seems to be colour popping. I'm not a great fan of that title because this is a creative process and I think it demands a slightly better label than that. It reveals colour from an otherwise monochrome image, but the success of the technique is almost entirely due to us selecting the right image, not just applying the technique to any old picture with a bit of colour. Now there's a number of different ways we can do this. We can work from Adobe Camera Raw, Photoshop or even a combination of the two. In the days before smart objects were introduced into Photoshop and when we were using more JPEG images than RAW images, the standard way of working was by using adjustment layers. Now when we're working on JPEG images in Photoshop if we use adjustment layers, they do allow a degree of protection. Adjustment layers in Photoshop allow us to work in a non-destructive way. They're not as powerful as working with smart objects, of course, especially those created from Adobe Camera Raw, but they do give us a route to creative strategic color. What we're going to do here is select an adjustment layer. If we go down to the bottom of the layers, right in the middle of that string of icons down there, we want the middle one, and when I select it, we do have a number of options that will all work as adjustment layers, but the one we want is black and white. Now the sliders in the property window will react to colors within your image, so some of them are going to have a large effect on the image and some of course not much at all depending on the colors but we can go down to the bottom right here and turn this little eye on and off because sometimes it's useful to just bring back the color in the image to remind ourselves of where the colors are should we want to adjust them using these sliders now I think we've got a pretty good monochrome image here so we don't need to do much but just to demonstrate how this works if we look at the probably the most obvious is the red slider if I move it slightly to the right you can see I can lighten the red colors in the image and here they seem to be mostly the telephone box of course and if I go to the left then I make the box even darker I'll leave it roughly in that position because it's the telephone box that I want to add color to so for the moment let's close down the properties and take a look at what we have in the layers palette. If you've watched my video on smart objects and smart filters within Photoshop, what we're looking at here is something very similar. We have a layer mask and it's this mask which is going to allow us to bring the red through just in that strategic place. We also have the ability to change our mind about the monochrome. For example, I can select the adjustment layer, double click, and we go straight back into the properties. So I would be able to make a change on top of a change on top of a change without losing quality. So the technique I would use here would be something like this. I would be selecting my mask. I would zoom in to one part of the image. I'll start, I think, right in the middle there so you can see or maybe down the edge is a better place to start I'm going to make sure I've got black as my foreground color I've got my standard soft edge brush and from the options at the top of the screen I'm going to use the tool at its maximum impact which is 100% opacity and 100% flow if I just bring my brush down a little bit and start to brush here you can see how easy it is to bring the color through but because we've got a roughly square shape here we can use the little method that I've I think I've demonstrated before 
but I'll demonstrate it in this panel in the middle to start. Of course we can use the square bracket keys to make the brush the right size for what we want to do. For example, if we were about to start on the edge, we'd want something pretty slim. But I can mask in a freehand way, of course, but if I click, hold the shift key and click a short distance away, you can see what happens. Now, although I'm painting in straight lines, that really is a powerful help to a lot of the work we do on a mask. So let me go to the top here. I'll start at this particular place and remember when we start working with a mask there really is no risk anyway but we're trying to avoid making the mask in such a slapdash way that we have to keep stopping to repair it. Much easier if we can get it right more or less first time. So let's make a start by clicking right at the top corner. Moving down a little bit, holding the shift key, click, 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 click. You can see that this actually gets quite fast. And I'm using the space bar just to move down the picture so I can navigate my way around it. I'm making full use of the straight edges of the telephone box. You see I missed a bit there, no problem, just go back, click, hold the shift key again, and that's tidied up. Now of course we're not going to do this sort of work in a few moments, particularly if we've got all of these cross beams here, but they're no great shakes using this technique. Click on the edge, click right the way across here, drop down a little bit and go back, there's one done, So, and we could possibly even get the brush big enough to do them in one go. Let's test that theory. I think we would probably just about get away with that. Let's try one more. Maybe not. I think I prefer to have it slightly smaller, a little bit more control, but it does mean I've got to do two sweeps. But going down, there you can see, not difficult at all. So it is going to take us just a little while to do this work, but once we've got it complete, of course, we've got everything on a new blank layer. Our original remains untouched underneath, and of course, as we go through this work, if we change our mind and we want to adjust the monochrome, we can do that too by double clicking the adjustment layer. Now I'm going to carry on and do the rest of the masking on this telephone box so you can just see the effect when it's done. But I wanted to show you this section here because the technique I'm using here where I move a short distance while holding the shift key you would think would be useless when we come to doing curves but in fact it works with tight curves as well and the way it works is that we first of all we can get the image a little bit bigger I suppose but when I click and move I just move a shorter distance and we don't see quite as much red on the top there but you can see I'm just making the steps a lot shorter and I can work my way around and have done some quite tight curves in all sorts of images. Then I can go back to my straight edge masking and the process will speed up. Now I've done my masking pretty quickly because I just wanted to give you an idea of what the finished image would look like. And the layer mask we have alongside the adjustment layer works in exactly the same way as any other mask will. If we hold the shift key and click the mask, we temporarily turn it off. Just click the mask and it'll come back. And if we hold the alt key and click the mask, there you can see the mask that I've actually created. And sometimes it's good to look at the mask like this because as you can see here, I can see now that I've missed one or two places. I need to look at that and see what I've done there, but you can see that these areas they should be all black. So I can patch up my mask even when it's in this sort of view which is useful as I've said. And when I'm happy I've done all of the little areas I've missed because it's easy to do this when we're revealing the red through. We can bring them back by just turning on the little eye. 
Now adjustment layers in Photoshop are very good but they are I think being left behind just a little bit by smart objects by the fact that we can open images up into Camera Raw directly from the main screen of Photoshop and of course the main contender is the raw file that we can create in Adobe Camera Raw. Now if you've watched my monochrome video you will recognize this image. I've opened it up a couple of days later and there I still have my smart object status so if I double click this image I have access straight the way back into Adobe Camera Raw. But in actual fact I don't want to add the strategic color inside of RAW. I'm going to do it in Photoshop here because it enables me to show you that we can copy this layer by going to the right of the thumbnail, right click and choose new smart object via a copy. I've now got two identical smart objects both of which can be opened up into Camera RAW but the link between the two has been severed. So if I were to select the bottom layer here, I'll turn the top one off so you can see what happens when we open this back up a little later. But if I select this one and double click, it will take me straight back into Camera Raw. Now I can double click my saturation and I can put the color back into this picture. I can add a little more color if I want to emphasize it a little bit. And when I click OK, it will impact just this layer and not the one above. So when you think what we've just done with a layer mask with an adjustment layer, of course we can do exactly the same thing here. I can turn my top layer on and now that covers up the color one. I can select the top layer and I can add a layer mask down from the bottom left of the layers palette. There's the mask selected. Now I can work in exactly the same way as I demonstrated with the telephone box. But let me show you just a little more. First of all with the sign up here. If we just wanted to reveal the blue in the sign. It's a straight edge so that's going to be pretty quick and easy to do. But let me show you maybe a little shortcut as well. So I'm going to pick up my zoom tool. I'm going to zoom into the image. I'll get that nicely large on screen. So I've got my mask selected. I've got black as my foreground color. I've got a standard soft edge brush. I think I can work with it slightly bigger. But the same opacity at 100% and the flow at 100% too. So I'm going to make a start by clicking right on the edge, holding the shift key and going as far as I can and painting in one straight line. Didn't quite get to the corner so we'll just use the space bar to do that. Click, one click down there, one click to the center, space bar, click and drag to the bottom left and back up to the top. Now what I'd like to do is hold that alt key and click the mask. I'll just make sure that's sealed up on the edge. We don't want any gaps here. I'm going to reduce the size of my image a little bit. Just one click down and I'll move it in place. Because all we've got to do is flood the center with black. Now we do have a paint bucket tool to do that. But because we've got a soft edge brush, it's not going to do it very effectively. So what I often do in this scenario is I quickly get the magic wand tool and click inside. And of course, it's able to pick that up pretty easy. But when we look at the edge, well, perhaps it's not as good as we first thought. We're a bit short. So what we could do with doing is moving this selection line out a bit. In fact, it's called expanding a selection. I mean, I can even see the pixels here. I reckon I'm going to want about 15 pixels here. That's just a bit of a guess because all I've got to do is put this line past this ghosted area here and into the black. So let's go to Select, Modify, Expand. doesn't matter if I get this wrong and I put too much in. I can always back away, but I'm going to guess 15. There we have it. I'll hit Control-0 to fit the image on screen. Now, within that selection, I can flood that with black. 
Alt Backspace will do that. Control D will remove my selection. There's my masking complete. The beauty here, of course, once again, is if we then feel we've put too much color into the area we want to show in color, we can double click the smart object. We can take it back into Camera Raw. We can back it off a little bit and then OK to open it up and take another look. Remember we're not opening up a different image here, we're just adjusting the smart object we currently have on screen. Now if we wanted to bring through the shop front in colour, of course we've got a little more work to do. But of course if we save this and give this a different name to the original that I opened, then we can always come back to this position at any time. So we could do a little bit of masking each day and if and when we get tired with it, we can just stop, have a break, come back the next day. But let me just demonstrate once again how we can go around the edge of this. I mean, I can just turn this off for the moment because I'm thinking of going around this area. So with my mask selected, I've got black, I've got my brush. I'm going to need this to be fairly large. Doesn't matter where you start, you've got to start somewhere. But here, click, click, click. See, some of the places, we are getting colour here, but they're not as dominant as you'll see with the green areas. So we just need to be a bit careful going around those. And I've got my brush a little bit big perhaps, but one two, three steps. I think I'll just go around there, start coming down the other side. Small steps here as I'm going around areas that are a little tricky. But once I get here, then I can go, go down in one step. And here, I can go up there. I mean, I could choose to leave that lead work out of the equation if I wanted to, I suppose. And I could just go and select the green but I can go right to the edge if I want to as long as I've got that soft edge brush you can see it's very effective and we can save an awful lot of time by getting this right and the more you do this holding the shift key the easier it becomes even curves like that I'm holding that shift key down here but of course it depends what we want to reveal we may want to reveal all of this and in which case we don't have to be quite so careful. Now as you can see by the spinning round of the screen I've taken just a little bit of time to do enough of the shop front to give you a feel for how the image may work. We've got quite a bit of colour here. I've done most of the shop front. There's a little bit underneath that bench which would need some attention. But I've also done the crab tree advert and also this one here. On top of that I've saved this as a layered Photoshop file so I still have access to my smart object for both the monochrome and the color and of course my mask. So at this stage if I wanted to just have the green of the shop coming through as long as I select my mask and what I would probably do here for sheer speed would be to pick up my lasso tool, just lasso around that, click the icon at the top left to add one selection to another, a little plus sign should appear, so I can go around that one, and as long as I've got my mask selected, which I can see I have, I can flood that part of the mask in white, and this part by simply Control backspace. Control D removes a selection and of course I would probably save this as strategic color too. In the early days of digital photography this strategic creative color had a degree of wow value and impact that perhaps it's losing just a little bit now. Because it's done quite so often if we are going to use this technique we need to pick a good image that's going to display it at its best and the work we do in Photoshop has to be faultless. 
If you're going to create this technique, try to make sure that the colour you're bringing through is in a strategically strong part of your image. But isn't it great that after all of this work, we can still double click our monochrome and open that back up into Camera Raw and make any changes that we see fit without any problem at all. And also, we could do exactly the same with the colour. So if after doing the work I did want to see what it looks like with a bit more vibrance in just the shop, I can step that vibrance up, I can adjust the smart object as you can see the progress on screen and then evaluate the result. Now I actually completed the recording of my video and once I'd put all of the parts together, of course, to make sure there's no blatant errors creeping into the video, I have to watch it start to finish. And in that short time, even then, I thought, I wonder if I should have made more of the yellow colour of the title in the green shop front. And this is why smart objects are so valuable. I'm going to have a look, simply by double clicking, opening that back up. I increased the vibrance a few moments ago, but I'm not sure it really needs it. But maybe we could do something with just these colours here. And we can do that using our hue, saturation and luminance. Because with a bit of luck we can just target the yellows. I'm going to push this way up and you can see I'm making quite a bit more of them. I'm not sure if the orange is going to have an impact as well, maybe a little bit. We'll go back to the basic, maybe just a tiny amount. Those are the small changes that you think about sometime later. But isn't it great that we can just come back in and we can have a look at them and see if they add or remove anything from the appeal of the image. If you're a member of a photographic society and you are considering using this technique to put an image into a competition. You do need to bear in mind that judges do see an awful lot of this. So it is worth giving it a second thought and make sure that if you're going to use this technique you pick a really cracking image, it has to be a sparkling monochrome and the colour needs to be strategically correct with your composition and the technique you use needs to be pretty good.